In this video, I'm gonna go over how to test your stomach acid levels at home. And stomach acid is critical for good digestion. And most people, unfortunately, are just not producing enough stomach acid. Now, what does stomach acid do? Stomach acid's job, number one, is to sterilize the food that's coming in. Anything we eat, even if it was just cooked, has potential pathogens, bacteria, and different microbes that are on it. And we don't want those microbes getting deep into our system, or at least we wanna help balance and regulate the, the microbes. We wanna reduce the overall microbial load that's coming into our system. Stomach acid does that. It helps kill off bacteria and different microbes that are not able to live in a low, in a, in a very strong acid environment. So that's really important. If not, we're at a higher risk for uh, foodborne illness, for developing bacterial microbial overgrowths in our gut, developing leaky gut syndrome, gut inflammation, autoimmunity, and, and the like. On top of that, stomach acid is really key for good protein digestion. That's where we actually digest protein. We need that acid to really start, to really marinate around the protein to break it down. And good stomach acid production produces an enzyme in the stomach called pepsin. Pepsin breaks down protein into peptides, smaller, smaller units, that we then break down into amino acids so we can absorb those amino acids and create new proteins. White blood cells, muscle cells, all the different cells of our body depend on these amino acids. And so we've gotta have good absorption there. Also, stomach acid is key for the absorption of key minerals. It helps to chelate magnesium and calcium and zinc and iron and all of these key minerals that come in our system. If we have low stomach acid or hypochloridria, we're not gonna be able to absorb those effectively. It also is key for activating a protein called intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor in the stomach absorbs vitamin B12. Some people, even though they're eating vitamin B12 rich foods like animal foods, their, their vitamin B12 is still really low because they're not able to produce enough intrinsic factor or they have autoimmunity to intrinsic factor so they're not able to absorb the vitamin B12 effectively. On top of that, good stomach acid helps close the esophageal sphincter and open up the pyloric sphincter. So when we don't produce enough stomach acid, food just sits in our stomach. And as it sits there, it starts to ferment and rot and produce gas. And that gas will put pressure on the esophageal sphincter. And if there's enough pressure that opens up that sphincter, and now we end up with acid jumping up into our esophagus, causing acid reflux, gastroesophageal reflux disease, causing more burping and belching coming out of that area. And food just sits there and it doesn't move through the pyloric sphincter and get into the small intestine well. What happens there? Then we end up with constipation, we don't get good bile flow, good pancreatic enzyme production. We actually need a very acidic bolus, meaning we eat our food, the food should get pre-digested in the stomach, and as it moves into the small intestine, it's very acidic. And that acidity actually triggers receptors in the proximal or front part of the small intestine, and those receptors trigger the release of bile. Bile is very alkalizing. The small intestine needs an alkaline environment. So now bile comes out. Bile actually is also antimicrobial. It kills off a lot of the acid-loving bacteria. So the acid-hating bacteria, that bacteria that can't survive in a low acid environment, they get killed in the stomach acid. And then the acid-loving bacteria get killed by good bile release, right? The emulsification there. And that helps keep us from having bacterial overgrowth in our small intestine. There's a condition called SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, that's characterized by um, poor nutrient absorption, gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea. It's one of the root cause factors with irritable bowel syndrome, with a lot of different di unwanted digestive disorders and autoimmune conditions. And so good stomach acid and good bile release really helps prevent against that. So again, we need the stomach acid to be able to get a good release of bile to emulsify fats and to create a good healthy microbiome in the small intestine. So that's super key there. And with our stomach acid at rest, when we're not eating, our acid levels are roughly three to 3.5. Now, the average, you know, if, if you look at neutral, if you remember back to chemistry class, or if, if you look at the pH of water, water should be neutral, right? It's roughly 7.0. 
our stomach is 3 to 3.5. So that's a big difference. Very acidic, even at rest. But in order to digest something like a steak, we actually need to get an, our acid levels to the point where they're in the 1.5 to 2.2 pH range. 1.5 to 2.2. So that's actually very energy demanding. And actually, we need a lot of energy to produce that stomach acid. We also need key nutrients like zinc is really important for stomach acid production. Chloride uh, is, is also really important, hydrogen. And so we need those compounds and we need energy, mitochondrial energy, in order to produce enough stomach acid to bring the pH down to 1.5 to 2.2. We also need activation from our vagus nerve. A vagus nerve is Latin for wanderer, comes from the brainstem, travels down into all the digestive organs, and it triggers the release of digestive juices. So we need vagal nerve activity in order to get there. So if we're eating on the run, if we're eating on the go, we're actually inhibiting that vagus nerve and we're not gonna produce enough stomach acid. So most people in society are constantly eating on the run or they're eating when they're in a stressed state. That's gonna reduce the amount of stomach acid they're producing. Actually sitting down for a meal, just being in the state where you're sitting and taking a few deep breaths, being in a state of gratitude, that will actually help trigger the vagus nerve and you'll get more of a release of stomach acid. Even better, if you can actually smell the food, take a few moments and smell the food. Hopefully your food is really aromatic, smells good. That also activates the vagus nerve and it activates the production of these digestive juices as your body prepares to digest the meal. So that is super key for stomach acid production. Now, let's go back to testing for stomach acid. The first test that you can do simply at home is the steak test. And all you do here is you take a six ounce steak, cook it, to where it's ideally um, well done, right? So it's, it's not like it's rare, and medium rare, well done. So should be easy to break down for your, your system and digest. So you go ahead, you cut that up. You can add salt if you want, but nothing else. All you're eating is the steak. You consume the steak, and then you see how you feel for the next two to three hours. Ideally, you should feel really good. You should have great energy. There's a lot of protein in there. Healthy fats should be very good for blood sugar stability. You should notice that you feel good when you eat that steak. If you notice you're burping, belching, that you've got gas, bloating, that you have more pain in your body, you feel really tired after eating that, that's a sign you may not be producing enough stomach acid. And that's why the food is just sitting there. It's fermenting, it's creating gas, it's stressing your system, causing all these unwanted symptoms. So that would be a sign you're not producing enough stomach acid. If you pass the steak test, great. That's a sign you're probably producing enough stomach acid. Another test you can do is the apple cider vinegar test. And with this test, all you do is you drink a little bit of apple cider vinegar, take one tablespoon and about four ounces of water. So you dilute it, so it's not real harsh, and you drink that, and then you repeat the steak test. And if you notice that you feel better after doing the apple cider vinegar than you did before you did that, that's a sign that you kind of basically have like a mild stomach acid deficiency and that the apple cider vinegar itself will help improve your symptoms. And that's good because you don't need to take supplements or anything like that. That's a good sign. Now, if you drink apple cider vinegar diluted in, in a, you know, one tablespoon and four ounces of water, so it's diluted, you drink it and you notice pain in your stomach, that's a sign you might have an ulcer you might have a gastric ulcer in your system. So you might have an actual, um, you know, an ulcer is where there's actual tissue damage and there's a wound in your stomach. And so now the apple cider vinegar go, goes in and it will actually inflame that ulcer, that inflame that area of tissue damage and that's why you're noticing the pain. If that's the case, you don't want to use apple cider vinegar, you know, you don't want to use a lot of lemon or lime or anything that's kind of acidic and instead, you want to really focus on mucilaginous type of herbs, aloe vera, marshmallow root, um, slippery elm. You can do teas with these. You could do gels, like there's aloe vera gel that works really well. There's powders. L-glutamine is another good thing. Um, licorice root. All those things really help with um, healing and strengthening that, that stomach lining. So that's really key there. But if the apple cider vinegar works and you feel better, fantastic. Now, another test is the baking soda test. What is the baking soda test? Basically, you take a quarter teaspoon, so not much, of baking soda. You put that in roughly about four ounces of water, 
okay, two to four ounces, so just a small amount, two to four ounces of water, you drink it. The baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. The sodium bicarbonate will meet with the hydrochloric acid, so it's a base and an acid. And when the base and the acid mix, it should produce carbon dioxide as a byproduct. And so when people do this, you consume that, you should really burp in about roughly three minutes, within three minutes, ideally within a minute after you drink this. And you do this first thing in the morning, so I, I forgot to mention that. First thing in the morning, the water should be slightly, slightly cold, you know, warm room temperature or slightly cold. Roughly, again, about four ounces, two to four ounces of water, quarter teaspoon of baking soda. You drink that and then just see how long it takes for you to belch, okay? If you belch within three minutes, it's a sign you're probably producing enough stomach acid. If it's three to five minutes, it's a mild reduction or it's like a, it's a lower stomach acid, but not fully deficient, but you need more support. If you don't burp or your burp comes after five minutes, that's a sign you have low stomach acid levels. So that's when you wanna address it. And here's how you address it. And this is a way of kind of optimizing where your stomach acid levels are. You get a supplement called Betaine HCL, okay? And you can get this with enzymes if you want. You know, there's a lot of different types of Betaine HCL. You just get it alone, stand alone, or you can get it with bile, with um, digestive enzymes. Ideally, just you know, for the test, you can just get it alone, BTNHCL. And what you do is you repeat the steak test. You take one capsule of the BTNHCL with the meal, okay? So right in the beginning or right in the middle, somewhere in that, that frame, don't take it at the end. And then see how you feel over the next few hours. If you notice that your symptoms have improved, that's a good sign. Now, if they, the symptoms are still there, but they're a little bit improved, you might need a little bit more. So you can do two capsules, right? And you keep repeating this test, okay, until you get roughly, you know, to the level of BT and HCL that you need. Let's say it's, you know, three capsules. And at three capsules, your symptoms go away. You feel a lot better when you ate that steak. That's what you know. Now you know you need three capsules of the BT and HCL with your meal, okay? And then you do that until you actually notice an increase in symptoms. And so if you take too much BT and HCL, you might notice a little bit more acid reflux, not as good a digestion. You know, it's a sign you kind of overshot, right? Maybe a little bit of burning in there. It's a sign that you overshot. So you want to notice for any signs of overshooting, notice for, for where the optimal level is, okay? And then over time, as you're optimizing your stomach acid with your meals, you're reducing stress on your body because you're digesting the meal more effectively, and then your body gets better at producing stomach acid. So this is not something you necessarily have to take for the rest of your life, at least not at the dosage that you start with. I've seen a lot of people where they'll start with six capsules, and then over time, in three months, they're down to two or three capsules because their body's better now at producing stomach acid on its own. They need less of the supplement to support them. And now they're optimizing digestion, they're breaking down proteins, creating amino acids, their skin is better, their hair is better, um, less digestive symptoms, their brain is functioning better, their immune system is better because they're absorbing things like zinc and vitamin D and all their key minerals. They're sleeping better at night because they optimize their stomach acid levels. This is a really important step for optimizing your overall health, getting your stomach acid right. Now again, you don't have to run out and get the supplement right away. Try the initial steak test. After that, if you're not doing well with the steak, try the, AC, the apple cider vinegar test with the steak. Try the baking soda test, right? See where you burp. And then, you know, if all three of these, if these are not working, now we go to the BT and HCL test to kind of find out how much of that supplement we need to be able to, to break down our food that we're consuming, metabolize it well, and absorb the nutrients that we need and create less stress in the body. And then in a sense, as our body gets better, over time we reduce our dosage of the BT and HCL. And in some cases we're able to get off that supplement completely and perhaps use apple cider vinegar or just use things like you can just chew on ginger um, and that will activate the vagus nerve. Take some deep breaths. Really try to smell the food that you're consuming. You know, there's a lot of different strategies that you can do to help optimize your stomach acid levels. And for many people that works and, and they're able to optimize them over time with the supplement, get off the supplement and just follow those for the rest of their life to maintain optimal stomach acid levels. So hopefully this is a helpful video for you guys. 
and we will see you in a future online training. Be blessed.